I was born and raised in New Orleans. Uh, my grandfather was a, a cabinet maker. He came here in the early 20s after uh, the uh, World War I. And uh, he established a cabinet shop during the Depression. When I was a child, he would have us go to the shop and, and uh, tr uh, do work for him, finishing and that sort of thing. And so that was my first introduction to, uh, to doing art. We didn't think of it that way at the time, <laughs> that's for sure my father really. Uh, he just wanted us to stay out of trouble. We're in the midst of something that's so exciting and so vital. People coming into this town who really love this city because of what it is. I mean, think about that. They love it. They love us. I love this city. I love it so much. That is New Orleans. We are on our way towards that. We are perfecting. We are rarefying. We are building up a beautiful city again. I really didn't believe that I could be an artist. I, uh, I mean, we, when we would work in the shop, we were just doing what my father told us to do. My goodness, the idea that I could make art, this was inconceivable. I went to school and I studied literature, and I was, I was very passionate about reading and, and, and novels and uh, poetry. So I wrote poetry and uh, I just dreamed of being a writer. And, Uh, when I got out of school, I just thought, well, I'll just go start drawing, and I don't know where this will lead me, but um, that's how I really started to get involved in it. And as I got deeper into that, I realized, well, you know what? I can do this. I really can. I can draw. I can learn how to do this. And then the next thing I learned was sculpture. I went to the academy and started uh, uh, working up figures and I remember talking to my father about it. My father said, well, that's impossible, because to him it was inconceivable. How do you do that, you know? I wanted more. I started taking drawing class. What the heck? Who am I to think that I should be doing that? But I just started doing it. And I was married, I had kids, I had the responsibility of that. But it just seemed like such a natural thing to do. I think when I started to study the human figure, again, it was like coming home. When you talk about the human figure, it's right in your face. I mean, when the face does this as opposed to that, your shoulders do this instead of that. It was only much, much, much later in my, deeply into my sculptural studies that I realized that I've been doing this all along. It's all, I've always been here, I never left. What, what's wonderful about being an artist is that you can concretize all this stuff. It really is tangible. And uh, again, I like the, the idea of activating all the senses, of getting everybody involved. As a sculptor, uh, um, it just gave me yet another reason to express all this uh, uh, wonderful sense of, uh, of passion and, and, and devotion to the human story. that I'm really, in a sense, marrying this person on a very deep emotional level, and we becoming very intimate. We're buddies, we're friends. And I, that's very, very important to me. I need, I, I desperately need to like and, 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 and love my models. I love my models. I love the people that I sculpt. It's very, very, very important to me that I feel that way. It's very involved. And convoluted and, and complicated. Start with the clay, you, gotta do, uh, you, you sculpt it up to a satisfactory level of, of, of finish, then you need to make a mold, you do some sculpting on the waxes too, and uh, then you go to investment, which is another mold. So you make two molds, one mold which you don't destroy, and then the investment mold is the mold that's destroyed. Uh, that mold is made on top of the wax, and uh, then that's put into the kiln and burnt out, all the wax is removed. And then you pull the, the, the investment out and you do the pour. What I've done is, is apply that same kind of principle to the human body. Did a lot of study in anatomy, try and memorize the, uh, uh, the anatomical form, try and conjure it up without looking at uh, uh, anything outside, try and visualize it inside and bring it out. And that's helped me to really kind of, uh, uh, to tap in to that uh, quiet inside myself.